In the polysaccharides podcast, we're going to go over some of the structural differences and glycosidic linkages between four common polysaccharides that you may come across in your life. All right, so polysaccharides are polymers, and the monomers that make up polysaccharides are monosaccharides. So single sugars come together, they're joined in a glycosidic linkage to form a polymer of sugars or a polysaccharide. The four structures, the four polysaccharides that we're going to focus on are amylose, amylopectin, cellulose, and glycogen. Hopefully in your nursing career you've at least heard about glycogen at this point. Um, they're all polymers of D-glucose. So the difference between them is how we connect the monomers of D-glucose. So what do those glycosidic linkages look like? What carbons are involved in that glycosidic link? And do they have branches or not in the structure? All right, so we're going to start with starch. Uh, starch is a storage form of glucose. It's found in plants. Uh, we find it in rice, wheat, potatoes, all of those starchy vegetables. Uh, it is made of two polysaccharides. The first is amylose, and you will have to be able to recognize this by structure on an exam. 20% of all starch is amylose. Amylose, looking at this structure, is um, a straight chain polymer, meaning it has uh, one, four linkages that allow it, if we were to stretch this out, it would be a long chain. Um, there'd be no branching on it. And the types of glycosidic linkages found in amylose are alpha, one, four glycosidic linkages. It is a straight chain. Um, the other plant starch or storage form of glucose is amylopectin. 80% of all starch is amylopectin. Um, so amylopectin has the same basic structure as amylose. It starts out as a straight chain um, polysaccharide with alpha-1,4 linkages, um, but then also it has 1,6 alpha glycosidic linkages. Those 1,6 linkages um, are the ones, if we were to stretch this out, we can show you an example of this. Those are the ones that provide the branching for this. Um, on the next slide, we're going to talk about glycogen, which has the exact same glycosidic linkages as amylopectin, unless you were being told structurally you could not tell the difference between these two guys. Right, so glycogen is an animal starch. It's a storage form of glucose. We store glycogen in our liver and muscles in animals. Um, and as we said on the last slide, it has the same glycosidic linkages as amylopectin. So unless I said one was from a plant and one was from an animal, it'd be really tough for you at this level to be able to tell those apart. So glycogen has 1,4-alpha glycosidic linkages. So that is your, your straight chain. Okay, and then it also has these alpha-1,6 linkages. So here's an alpha-1,6. You have the straight chain, and I, I think this shows it better. Here's our alpha-1,4 linkages, both here and here. That would provide a straight chain. And then if we were to count around the structure, we have a 1,6 alpha linkage. Um, that 1,6 alpha linkage is what provides that branching in the structure. And we didn't show this image on the last slide, but that is what it would look like in amylopectin as well. Cellulose is our last polysaccharide that we're going to talk about, and cellulose is only found in uh, plants. So it is a structural carbohydrate, so it helps to provide structure for the plant. It's found in wood, um, which is a plant as well as plants. Um, and the reason it is so structurally strong is because you have parallel chains and bundles. So we have the monosaccharide glucose and they're connected in beta 1,4 glycosidic linkages, not alpha this time. So um, the reason the cellulose fibers are so strong is because we have many of these straight chain beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage polysaccharides together. Think of it like a rope. You have a bunch of parallel bundles, that's gonna make your rope a lot stronger. It's just like having different strings in a rope. Um, these are insoluble in water, which kind of makes sense because we don't lose all of our plants. They don't break down into their monosaccharides into glucose every time it rains. Um, humans cannot digest a beta 1,4 linkage. 
So we cannot digest these linkages. We don't have the necessary enzymes to digest it. So when we eat plant materials and plant starches like amylose and amylopectin, the difference is we can break apart amylose and amylopectin because they have an alpha-1,4 linkage, but we cannot break down cellulose with a beta-1,4 linkage. Um, so when people talk about eating insoluble fibers, what they're talking about is eating plant material that has cellulose in it. Um, and insoluble fiber is so good for you to have a certain amount of. And, and when I say insoluble fiber, think of like the peel on an apple. That was the insoluble part. And the inside would be your soluble fiber that you can break apart. You want a good amount of insoluble fiber because it acts like a rotor rooter on your colon and it cleans everything out and it keeps everything moving. Um, now, other animals can eat cellulose, they can eat grass, they can eat plants, and they're able to digest cellulose because they have an enzyme. Um, actually, they have a relationship with an enzyme. Um, ruminant animals like cattle and deer, they have bacteria in their gut. The bacteria are the ones with the enzyme able to hydrolyze the beta-1,4 linkage. So if they didn't have this relationship, the symbiotic relationship with bacteria in their gut, they would not be able to break this down. Um, so they're able to actually derive nutritional benefit from cellulose, whereas we are not able to do that.